Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Suzerain Rizia, a new DLC for Suzerain, a political role-playing game in a fictional universe. We are King Romas Torres of Rizia in this game, and it is episode number 12 of our Let's Play series. So we're a ways into this. I won't bore you with all the specifics, but basically, if you missed the last episode where we left off last time, we started an affair with our Secretary of Defense kind of person, uh, who is uh, a fellow noble uh, in a, another house in this kingdom. Um, we have been sort of meeting with her surreptitiously, uh, starting with a drunken liaison after a wine tasting at another noble's place. And um, yeah, that's still ongoing. Uh, we don't have a wife because she died in a boat accident before the game starts, but we do have a daughter. So if this comes out, there's family dynamics to manage, but there's also sort of governmental politics to manage. In addition to that, we are about to go into a meeting with Victor Smolak, who is basically this game's version of Hitler. Uh, he is... He definitely commits genocide against religious groups in this game. And the problem is that he currently controls a province of ours called Zill, which is under a 25-year lease for his, you know, his country where they are sort of acting as, as governor or protector of this territory, which was handed over to them in a sort of civil war time period. So it was given to them to essentially have them come into our side and help in this war. The 25 years is almost up. They were supposed to be handing this over to us, but they've been reluctant to do that. There was a terrorist bombing. There's been other things. And this all, dude's also just not trustworthy and a dictator. So... We're trying to see how to get this territory back in our hands, and that's kind of where we're picking things up. As a reminder, this was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel. Link in the description if you want to follow it over there. But without further ado, let's get started. And then... Do that. That would not be very smart, I don't think. Let's see what the new bilateral agreement says. Victor Smolok, president of Valen, had finally agreed to meet with me after several moments of silence. Just ahead of my meeting with him, I convinced my council for a br convened my council for a briefing. Lorento, as you have the latest information from Valen's foreign ministry, would you like to be? What would you like to begin with? We are in uncharted territories, Your Grace. President Smolak's inv invocation of the threat mitigation protocol has been challenged. But the AN felt, failed to meet a consensus. Essentially, he's in possession to hold Zill hostage until his demands are met. And indeed, the new handover plan his ministers are now proposing has a three-year timeline attached to it. That can't be a standard procedure, can it? As I said, this is an unprecedented situation. I believe the AN is satisfied that President Smolak has set a new deadline. At all. And what makes us think that this one will not be met when the last one was not? Anger danced in Lucidia's eyes. She gestured at the rest of the table. This is our territory. Why are we not setting the agenda? I'm surprised the international community is not challenging any uh, an oppressive man like President Smolak. What are the people living in Zill? Has anyone asked them how they feel about the extra three years of Vesic rule? We may still have the opportunity to set the agenda. Any agreement with Valen proposes, pr proposes is bound to have an economic aspect. And considering the dire straits Valen is in the re with the rest of the world, President Smolak might be about to offer us the deal of our lives. I will remind you all that Valen is under partial sanctions by most of the West. The only commodity they've been trading freely in is oil. The presence of the Arana Torres Association in Zill has helped sway public sentiment to our side. Our investigators are cooperating with Valen Intelligence, which makes it more difficult for President Smolak to claim we are uninterested in the region's security. Even so, we should handle this meeting with delicacy. Any aggression on our part could be used against us. Delicacy is one thing, submission is another. We must be careful what we promise. Very true, Your Majesty. At some point, it may become necessary to call Valen's bluff. Unless concessions are given, are made, it'll take you years, if not decades, to get Zill back. We 
What is the status of our foreign investigation? Thank you, Mr. Pre Majesty. A few fingerprints were found near the bomb site, but they don't match any of the ones we have on file for Su Omania members. Nor were they recognized by Valen's database. Which resources are we able to bargain with? Gold is always an option, although if you follow through with your support of Morelia and its crusade for control of the Met Meftin ITZ, one of our most lucrative sources may soon be off limits. If it's weapons that Valen is interested in, we can offer our Dator rifles. And despite our deal with the swords, we have a small wine surplus that we can sell or trade. We didn't drink it all at Quailus. It only felt like we did. Vina grimaced at the reminder, while the other counselors chuckled. I glanced over at Lucidia, who threw me a wink. The others didn't seem to notice. If we can manage to free up the natural gas in the Oris field in time, that'll be a tradable asset. But a country is as rich in oil as Valen won't need much of it. If all else fails, we have a healthy budget. But I'd rather not pay Valen an amount to what amounts to ransom money. Grand Viseman, do you think the religious affairs in Valen can have an impact on negotiations? It very may well, Your Majesty. Our neighbors have long followed the path of Danusteri, and I did not fault fault them for it. But in the hands of the current regime, that religion has become a cudgel with which to persecute Valen's minorities, the Bloods, you mean. Is Bloodish Galdicism the same thing that's practiced in Derdia? There's a few divergences, mostly regarding the use of violence against an op opponent who has not directly provoked you. Bloodish Galdicism scripture forbids that, this, that the definition of provoke, pro provoked is often stretched. The Derdians allow it when their supreme wise men is de deemed that it is for the greater good. No surprise there. Any word on the House of Delegates on this? They have met about it, Your Majesty. The majority consensus was that the timeline of the Zill handover should take a backseat to protecting Rizian interests. Conceding too much to Valen will quickly earn you the ire of the Baroness de Rava and her party. The opposition, meanwhile, is much more amenable to compromise, particularly those party members from Brennus. That makes sense. They've been missing a piece of their province for long enough already. With all due respect, Your Highness, the Saisons lost the right to call Zil theirs when the former Duke of Iza commended an act of treachery. They cannot seriously expect that it will be reincorporated into Brennus as if nothing happened. And why not? We took Iza from them. How much more punishment does their house need to endure? Lucidia looked askance at her. I do hope you're not letting your emotions cloud your judgment, Your Highness. For what it's worth, I agree with the princess, and not only because a number of historic Escobal estates are located in Zil. What fallout can we expect if we don't come to an agreement? I highly doubt that a full deal will be reached today, only the beginning of one. His Majesty question stands, do we have a contingency plan? Well, Duchess, if our negotiations fall through, and international pressure is insufficient to force Valen back to the table, then the responsibility will fall on Zill itself. What does that mean, Mr. Escobar? If a majority of Zill's citizens believe the territory should belong to Rizia, the Vezic government cannot simply ignore them, especially if we gather external support. They can and they will. No state peacefully gives power away. Do we even have a majority? I thought the opinion was divided. President Smolak announcement has already put many undecided citizens into the pro-Rizian column and we have an avenue to influence them further. The Zill branch of ATA has already been coordinated a Rizian-led reunification initiative in the wake of an announcement. With enough pressure from both inside and outside Zill, Valen will have to give the region back, or at the very least hold a referendum. Zill doesn't need a referendum, Mr. Escobar. It needs a resistance. It's cut off from Vezek mainland. Divert enough funding to weapons to the right groups, and we can make an overthrow happen without getting our hands dirty. <laughs> My son told me what he offered you and Zill, your majesty. Perhaps now would be the time to take him up on it. 
We have the option to activate a cell of Su Omani and Zil. To what end, Your Majesty? Uh, as a last resort in case negotiations don't work out? The greater good. The greater good. But otherwise, but only if they had more arms and better training. Otherwise, they'd just be a nuisance to both sides. We have the budget to provide both, but sending supplies in secret might prove difficult logistically. Where there's a will, there's a way. Good luck, Father. Elena, Hugo, and Vina left the room. Lucidia seemed to be intentionally delaying her exit, her eyes locked on mine. Titus and Loreno stood by the door waiting to escort me to the meeting. Duchess Azaro, a quick moment of your time. <laughs> We're just gonna do it again? Um... I don't think two actually results in anything. Let's find out. I doubt it. She's gonna give us something. Not that. My advances toward you and Qualys were rather ill-advised. I'm afraid I overstepped the bounds of prop propriety. You didn't overstep any bounds. I found your candor refreshing, and I still do. secret affair how titillating <laughs> um i think four is probably the best option right but i like the idea of a secret affair as king what do you guys think what does the chat think I shall consider. Four. Four is probably, probably the option. Probably four. How's General Azaro's health? She's always very sarcastic, though. <laughs> Talking marriage after one romp. It's kind of a sarcastic statement, but yeah, it didn't... Tiddling! How titillating! She smiled. Not secret for long, God willing. In the meantime, here's something for luck. It's, I think that was the right answer based on her smiling. It was a chess piece. A queen. It appeared to be made of marble with gold details. My uncle, the mutineers ransacked his country house after they killed him. They took the set, but this must have fallen out in the chaos.
four or two. A queen, the most valuable piece on the chessboard. We'll debrief later. I look forward to it. Discuss it with you later, probably. Four is funny, but maybe puts him in his place too much. Two or one feel like the pragmatic response. Your Majesty, a true pleasure to be here. I'm glad you finally t found time to meet with me. You wouldn't believe what they're saying about me in your paper, Your Majesty. Smolok's iron grip on Zill enforced by dictatorial command rather than any real aspect of international law or the rights of the local population should be seen as a threat to us all. I can't control what the Rizian press says about you. I mean, I do have a controlled press. This might be true if I had actually gone with the free press option, but I haven't. But it's kind of the conciliatory response. beginning to find common ground. Now that you're here, Mr. Smola, can you explain in greater detail why you decided to postpone the Zill handover? It's simp simple, Mr. Echobal. Zill is now home to several million citizens of Vazic origin. Under the terms of the treaty our predecessor signed, they were to have the right to stay and work in the region. But the Zill attack made it clear that those terms would not be respected. Without the protection of my government, I fear further violence will come to those who stay. What can I do to reassure you of your citizens' safety? I understand we'll make a special effort to integrate Vezex who wish to stay. My ministers and I agreed that before Zill is reintegrated into Rizia, a good faith effort must be made to strengthen the bonds between our two countries. We've therefore drafted an addendum to the original treaty, a series of measures meant to renew our old friendship. What precisely do you mean by friendship? A military alliance? And if this friendship helps Valen bypass certain trade sanctions, so much the better? Mm. 
We in Valen do not require the Rizian military's help to defend ourselves. Mr. President, we received the draft from your ministers, but the terms were extremely vague. You're asking for a trade deal, a bilateral migration agreement, and a counterterrorism cooperation act. Tell me more about the trade deal, President Smolok. If there's one fact everybody knows about Valen, it's that we sell oil. Meanwhile, we are worried about the impact that loss of Zill will have on our economy. We need a way to stabilize our currency. We therefore propose a straightforward exchange of Vesic oil for Rizian gold. At what I am sure you will agree is a very favorable rate. Four barrels for every one ounce, to be exact. I don't know. Is that a favorable rate? I would have no idea. What makes you think that Rizzi is in the market for Vasic oil? Everyone in the mar everyone's in the market for oil. There's a reason they call it black gold. Your kingdom may be about to come into a large amount of natural gas. Either way, your counselors will tell you about the importance of diversifying one's energy sources. Public's not known for its stability. How can we you guarantee you'll be a reliable trading partner? As a stakeholder in Rizian Royal Mining Company, I have a vested interest in keeping the production consistent. Mr. Smolok, we're negotiating for the return of uh, my territory, not haggling some Vesic Bazir. Um, what about this bilateral migration deal? I can extend those rights to the Vesex currently living in Zill, but to every citizen in Valen? Take more than a trade deal to repair Valen's damage, Mr. Smolak. What about this anti terrorism pact? I don't trust this guy either, Ox. 
I just have no idea what to do here. Like, I don't... I don't particularly want to strike a deal with the devil. I do need Zell. We have concrete evidence to back up that assertion. Classic bloods and Dardian citizens are to be turned away at the Rizian border. Rizia is duty bound to welcome our fellow Verkists. what? Well, your majesty, let's say the Republic of Valen decides to take a more proactive approach to the BFF problem. If your kingdom promised to aid us in that, it would of course be far more valuable than any form of border control. What kind of aid would be required? It's our long-term goal to drive the insurgents out of their strongholds in the north of our country. Once that happens, we suspect some will flee south toward Zill. In that, can that case, we would be most grateful if the Rizian Navy prevented them from reaching their destination. Our Navy is currently preoccupied with pails. I'm not asking for your help today, only someday. But... I am also happy to discuss other terms. Not everything. What about the three-year timeline? I'm not waiting three fucking years. When it's when will it end? How can I be sure that in three years it won't turn into ten? Quite a lot to think about, Your Majesty. I'll have the draft document right here if you're ready. Mm -hmm. 
It's perhaps President Smolok's boldest demand. And it would be a rather extreme leap for Rizia, considering the Vezix and other migrants don't even have the right to work the same jobs as native-born Rizians. Passing such a monumental decree without the approval of your council or the House of Delegates could prove d dangerous. Granting workers rights is the furthest you should go, I think. But other factions may have different opinions. What will be the impact if I enact the bans he's asking before? I'm confused about this trade deal he's asking for. Do we need to import exactly the same amount that we're exporting? In fact, if we don't want to make too many concessions in other areas, we may be able to settle for a lopsided deal. I still feel like Smolak's asking too much. To be honest, we don't have enough of a negotiating edge over Valen to simply discard this agreement. If you refuse every single one of the conditions listed here, a diplomatic handover of Zill will be out of the question. In other words, we'll have to resort to that contingency plan we discussed earlier. I suppose. I must warn you, those could end up costing us far more dearly than a few trade and border concessions. The Zill Agreement is being renegotiated to strengthen the economic, cultural, and political ties between the nations of blah blah blah. Important from... import from Valen. Choose Vezic goods to be imported to Rizia under the new trade agreement. What are the, like... I don't want any of these! Are any of these worth anything? Like, do they help our economy? Oil? I, I mean, I guess oil, but that is... What if we just did all of them? Well... Choose Rizia's goods to be exported to Valen under the new trade agreement. I'm not giving him gold. Small arms and wine? I can export all three, but will it piss people off? Also, is the queen gonna be pissed? Don't promise aid against the BFF. So wait, I thought... Okay. So if we don't promise aid against the BFF... Don't implement a band on, on these people. Grant Vesic's equal rights to work. So this this will happen. If we do this, we'll get this, right? We're not going to ban... We're not going to do the counterterrorism. We're not going to promise aid. So if I do... But here's the thing. This is neutral, right? So I don't need to do... Anything. If there was an option to make it happen faster than three years, I would do that, but... I don't even want to negotiate. This is bullshit. Like, these are fucking outrageous terms. I shouldn't even be agreeing to any of this. Negotiating power is right down the middle, so it doesn't look like it's either...
positive or a negative, so I'm assuming this would pass. I see. I was not aware the King of Rizia took me for a simpleton. It was neutral, right down the middle. Does it have to be positive for him to agree to it? You have to be plus for him to accomplish it? Seriously? Well, that would have been good to know. <laughs> Victor sucks. Lashing out will not solve anything. So let's just see. If you do this for me, in addition to the meeting, the conditions you've already agreed on, I can envision allowing Zill to hand over to proceed. What is the favor? Rico. What do you mean by deal with him? It's not enough simply to not support him. He must be stripped of his power. It is my wish that he be arrested and extradited to Valen where he will meet true justice. Yeah, no, I can't do that. He's a noble from the most powerful family in Rizia. He cannot be cr treated like a common criminal. That is the country you wish to rule, your majesty? A place where nobles are not beholden to the same laws as everyone else? Mr. Smolak, I understand your concerns about Duke Torres, but to turn him over to your country would require a trial and conviction, followed by lengthy legal proceedings. So the plus three is going to go away once we reject this. I'm not going to send a Mariko. That's bullshit. I took Mr. Echobell's opinion into account, of course, but in the end I would rather make no deal than an unfair one.
Have a safe trip back. I thought we were a strong welfare state. Now we're a weak welfare state? It just randomly happened? Average amount of illegal substance abuse. At least that got better. Discontent in those communities. Why? What? I didn't do anything. Option one probably goes the furthest to winning international support for us, I would think. I feel like if I go with the uprising, it'll turn people against us, which will be a problem with the situation in Pales. I guess we'll see. We can always support other things later, right? Anton Rain has come to power. The timelines are consolidated. General Lazaro is returned home after spending an extended period in the hospital due to a stroke. Good for him. Alright. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. This will really piss off nobles. A non verkist ta religious tax? Love more money. to build my navy a little bit stronger in case there's is going to be a war. We have two ships and one submarine. You know what's confusing though? It, here, it says plus one per turn from ship production. But we didn't get anything this turn. Unless it cost money to blockade the oil and gas. Although wait, it says two and two down here. So you get, is that based on what you produce then? I don't, these two don't line up. Which one is it? Which do we have? Oh, wait. This is what we have available to us to purchase. This is what we actually have deployed. So we can purchase up to two more battleships but to do that we have to spend 750 equipment I got it
Uh, we get more military equipment when that... Did the university complete? Or is that still under construction? When that completes, we get more stuff, right? Is, was this immediately, or is that on completion? I don't know the answer to that. It'd be nice to sell battleships for money, but... I'd give me 500. Which would give me 850. Which is enough to buy one military ship. So, here's a question. Does this production here in this pool, is that what it draws from if I sell it? So if I sell, it must, because we have two trained. So selling military ships, I could, sh I could sell the two battleships that are currently in our pool, that are not trained, for four budget, then I could use that budget to reinvest in the economy, and then I would still get a new battleship in the next turn, which then I could train to expand the size of my fleet. I'd have to buy some military equipment to do that probably, but that is a possibility. It'll piss off my lover, but Let's make sure that that went the right way. It did, so we'll have one battleship we can train in the next turn. Alternatively, we could buy another submarine if we got a little bit more military equipment. That's another option to go. Or we can sell submarines next turn, too. It does take a turn for training to go through, though. So we have seven budget now. Plus one air fleet. I don't understand what that does. Where does that go? We don't have any air fleets, do we? Oh, we're still building that airport airfield, right? We'll get two of those next turn. So we can buy two, 500 more military equipment for two budget. That allows me to, oh, but I don't have enough, I don't have a submarine till tomorrow. Damn it, I forgot about that. Okay, well I've got the military equipment in any event. That'll be available next turn. I'm assuming these two military ships that are trained and the two submarines that are trained are going to Pals. I could have just bought more battleships with the cash, too. Oh, but that's equipment, not training. Never mind. Um, insufficient energy. You know what's funny is selling the naval equipment if I get one per turn, 
that draws in a ton of budget to sell ships. So I think we're going to do that. I do probably need to do some civilian stuff for the people. So let's do health and education. Okay, so health and education is done. Air Force expansion will be done tomorrow. Naval expansion in two days. I don't know how many turns we have left, but our budget's not going to be pretty next turn, though. We might get worse after the gold negotiation, but... I think that's going to do it for today, though. This is where we wrapped up the live stream. So this is where we'll wrap up this episode, episode number 12 of our Suzerain Rizia series. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. And without further ado, I'll go ahead and sign off here. So until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.